to the book of Proverbs chapter number 14. Proverbs chapter number 14, of course, being a piggyback Sunday, we are um, being a piggyback Sunday, let me make sure I'm on here, being a piggyback Sunday, we are um, having, of course, preaching here at 10, we'll have preaching again at 11, then we'll have a meal on the grounds before we dismiss for the day, and so excited about uh, our time together and uh, preaching a message, I, I periodically will, will address this uh, situation or this topic just ever so often as a pastor, I believe I, that it's a good thing for me to do. And so we are in Proverbs chapter 14. I want to read verse 34. I'll make a few comments and then we will um, we'll, we'll hop into the message today, okay? Proverbs 14, 34, the Bible says this, righteousness exalteth a nation. Then he says, but the other side of that coin is this, but sin is a reproach to any people. What does that mean? It simply means this. For any nation on the earth, when a nation is permeated with righteousness, it is a blessing to that nation. It exalts that nation. However, on the contrary, whenever a nation is overrun with sin, it leads to reproach and or a, a degradation of a society, okay? And can I say this? If, if righteousness, Brother DJ, exalts a nation then the responsibility for righteousness lays in the lap of the group that's here to spread it. That would be the church, God's people. Would you agree with that? I think everybody in the building today would agree that we are told and taught by our Lord that we are, God's people are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world, right? And that is another way of saying that you are, because of your righteous position in Christ, you should be putting that righteousness, spreading that righteousness out into your community. It should affect every area of your life, everything you touch. You want to infect it with the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we're, we're very fortunate Christians in that we do live in a nation on this earth where we actually get a chance to vote for our leadership. Would you agree that's a good thing? I say because of that, then we have to kind of take our responsibility to spread righteousness into the voting booth with us. Would you say that's true, right? We want to make sure that when it comes to, to exercising that, um, that, that, that privilege, we'll call it a privilege, that opportunity. Because we have, we have brothers and sisters in other parts of the world like China, North Korea. I mean, where they don't get a chance to vote. Your leaders are who your leaders are. They couldn't spread, their, their, their ability to spread righteousness is very, very limited to just their personal lives. Ours, however, is not. It can affect every everything that we uh, are able to impact, right? And we understand that uh, our, our leaders are elected leaders in America. And can I say, I do believe because of that extra privilege we have, Brother DJ, that we'll probably give an account for it one day. We'll give an account on whether or not we exercised our privilege, right? I told you a few weeks ago, vote, right? You should. And then we'll probably also have to give an account for how we voted. And whether or not what we were voting for was actually, listen now, influencing our nation for righteousness or not. Now, I could make a strong case, and I'm going to pray in a minute. We're going to preach here momentarily. I could make a strong case today that if professing Christians would vote consistently, the whole political system would have to bow and cater to the church. They don't. They, they don't even they don't give us a second glance. Recently, it was said by a political candidate. The reason people don't respect y'all is because you don't vote. You talk a lot, but you don't do anything about it, right? And unless we go do something about it, and listen, all the talking is just talking. It's nothing but barbershop, beauty shop lingo. It's worth nothing. Let me give you real quickly a few stats. I'll try to pray, and I'll tell you what's on my heart for today, okay? In America, there are over 218 million people that are eligible to vote. Only 147 million, million of them were actually registered to vote. Listen to this, okay? In 2020, the last election we had, 60% of the people who were actually registered voted. Well, it was 87 million people. That means that only 40% of the nation right now is turning the ship. 40% of the country that's participating in the process is dictating how the rest of us live. You ever think about that? In your lifetime, there's probably never been an uh, 8 to 12 year period of time where elections seemingly mattered as much as they have the last 12 years. Would you agree with that? Okay, with that being said, listen closely to me now. Again, I'll repeat. If Christians would register and vote their Christian values, we might actually have a chance to impact the nation more than just in our local community efforts. 
So I want to preach on that this morning for a few minutes. A Christian's Guide to Voting Issues. That's the title of my message today. Okay? A Christian's Guide to Voting Issues. See, I thought we weren't supposed to have politics in the pulpit. Well, we do every once in a while. Because I look at this as, a, I'm not a Christian nationalist, meaning I don't believe, I don't believe that America is the apple of God's eye. I believe we're blessed as a Gentile nation. And I believe there's biblical reasons for that. But I do believe this right here, that because we have that privilege, we should exercise that privilege, okay? And I believe we should, as Christians, make our impact of righteousness in the, at the ballot box. I believe it's part of being salt and light. And so I want to talk to us about that uh, this morning for a little bit. Um, I believe you can be a patriot without being a nationalist, and that just means I don't believe, again, I believe the apple of God's eye is Israel. But we have a responsibility, and we want to be good stewards of that responsibility. Let's pray and ask the Lord this morning to open our understanding. Father, man, we know the Bible has a lot to say about nations. The Bible has a lot to say about the way righteousness affects a nation and or unrighteousness affects a nation. I'll give you about three different verses today by way of introduction. Things that are just, well, I call them very hard-hitting, impactful uh, verses the Bible gives us to kind of make us think about the state of our country and as Christians, our place in affecting the state of our country. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 9, verse 17, the Bible says this, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. I don't know about you, but that, that makes me back up and think for a moment. In other words, Brother Al, if, if the way a nation either embraces or rejects the God of the Bible is going to dictate how that nation ends up, the living conditions, how it survives in this world, I don't know about you, but I, knowing the God of the Bible, I see that as my responsibility to help impact the nation I live. Not even as much for my living conditions, but what about my future heritage in my family, children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren that will come in the future. I don't know about you, but those before me handed me a wonderful set of circumstances to live in, America. I'd really love to do my part to pass that on to future generations. I think I have a responsibility. to. And if all nations, listen, I think we can step back today and look at nations that are godless and say, hmm, that verse looks like, like Haiti. Haiti's a, I know we got missionaries in Haiti, but overarchingly, Haiti is a definitely a non-Christian nation it's a cesspool of just, well, you would not send your worst enemy there. Now, can we say that America is one of the, because that nation is plural, so it's not just talking about Israel. It's talking about any nation that would encounter the God of Scripture, embrace that God, and, and, and desire to make His principles and His Word part of the fabric and fiber of how they operate would be blessed by God and all those that did the opposite would also receive the, the just recompense of that decision. You cannot look at the American currency, the national anthem, the monuments and the laws and not say that they have been heavily influenced by the Judeo-Christian God. You and I know they have. Would you also agree with me that it's less in the thought process of America today than it ever has been? Probably so. So we are a nation right now that's in danger of forgetting God. And that means the more we forget God, the more we'll be turned into hell, meaning we'll be forsaken. That's what it means to be turned into hell. In other words, here's what I'm saying. If the church in America rejects or forsakes God, expect our God to in turn forsake our country. So we have a responsibility. I'm talking especially to these young ones on the, on the first few rows. You're getting ready to inherit that responsibility that you'll need to steward well and be ready to pass on not only to your children, but to your grandchildren as well. In Psalms 33 verse 12, the Bible says this, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he have chosen for his own inheritance. In other words, when a nation makes the God of the Bible the God that they lean to the most, the God they, uh, they, they permeate their society. Now listen, that is a statement really about predominance because there is no nation without lost people. Israel even has lost people in it, and they're God's chosen seed. But what it is saying is this, that whenever a nation is majorly influenced by the Christian God of the Bible, that nation right there, listen to me now, will be a blessed nation. And we are. Uh, it has in days gone by dictated things like our foreign policy. One of the reasons that as a nation that we have stood with Israel as long as we have is because we have allowed the God of the Bible to influence us. And we understand what God said to Abraham in the Old Testament that all Abraham's friends will be blessed and all his enemies will be cursed. And so I'm so glad that many hundreds of years ago America made its mind up we're going to be friends with Israel. Amen. That still matters, by the way. That, that is probably more in jeopardy than it's ever been in my lifetime. And you better believe that, this, that dictates how this old boy votes. I'm not, I'm not selling my great-grandchildren whom I'll never meet down the river by turning my back in the ballot box on the nation of Israel. 
not happening as long as I'm leaving, uh, living and breathing. That ain't going to happen, right? I'm going to vote for Abraham's seed. I'm going to pull for them even though they ain't right. And most of them reject God. They still his youngins and he's a God of promise and when he makes one, he keeps it, amen. I'm not their judge or their jury. I'm just supposed to be their friend. <laughs> amen, amen. Lastly, I'll give you this by way of introduction. We'll hop into the meteor part of the message. In the book of Proverbs chapter 29, verse two, and this is one that really impacted my heart years ago. The Bible says this, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. It means this, that Rational people feel the safety of righteous leadership. We feel not only the safety, but the prosperity of righteous leadership. And when I say that, trust me, I understand. I'm making these terms. I'm using this, this very loosely today because in our system of government where we're at today, regardless of where you're not, you're not seeing an overabundance of righteousness. I'm not saying that we're, we're not going to vote for King David, y'all. In my lifetime, I've been voting since I was 18. I've never voted for a David type. I just never have. If you think you have, then Lord bless you. Amen. I just never have. And I know this is a common cliche in America. You say you vote for the lesser of two evils and this, that, and the other. And I don't, I don't, I don't know where all that lands. The only thing I know is this right here. I just had to step out of the box and hold my nose a little bit and say, okay, I'm looking for some kind of issue that's related to my Christian faith that I need to voice my opinion on. And boom, there's one. And boom, there's one. And boom, there's one. That's going to dictate what I do when I go in there and check that box or mark that circle or, you know, whatever I do. Whatever I do. And so... The question is, again, how are they going to get there? How are these issues? How is being a friend of Israel uh, going to be something that is maintained in America unless Christian people that understand righteousness make sure with their vote that it takes place, right? And we can go down the list. And again, there are going to be years whenever you, uh, when you vote by, uh, in an election and there's four or five issues you feel real good about it, and then there's one or two over here, you're like, man, I wish it was different. Uh, in that particular area where my candidate stand, I just got to do what I got to do. And uh, before we hop into the meat of the message, let me give you some things to consider. There was a man one time that was talking to a crowded room of people, and he said something like this. He said, here's what I want to do. He said, I want, I want to give you the resume of a sort and organization. And he said... I want you at the end to tell me which one you think it pertains to. He said, I'm going to give you a vote at the end of this, okay? He said, you're voting between whether you think this group of people that I'm describing to you are part of the NFL or part of the NBA. And then he starts to list this criteria. He said, of the people that are part of whichever organization I'm describing, here's what their resume looks like. 36 of them have been accused of spousal abuse. Seven arrested for fraud. 19 accused of writing bad checks. 117 have directly or indirectly bankrupted at least two businesses. Three have done time for assault. 71 cannot get a credit card because of bad credit. 14 arrested for drug-related charges. Eight on shoplifting charges. 21 are currently defendants in lawsuits. And 84 have been arrested for drunk driving. He said, now let me ask you a question. How many of y'all think I'm talking about the NFL? And some of them, some of them raise their hand. How many of y'all think I'm, I'm talking about the, the NBA? So the other side raised their hand. He said, I'm not talking about either. I'm talking about the 435 members of the United States Congress. <laughs> We're being led by people of low morale and low character. How can you vote on how to spend our money if you can't even manage your own? Right? It's almost funny for them to come out and be against normal citizens for tax liens and stuff. Have you ever seen how many of them don't pay their taxes? And I'm like, how? what a bunch of hypocrites. How in the world would y'all go after anybody for not paying their taxes when have a, a, a Sharpton don't even pay his taxes. He's not a politician, but I remember I saw one time how much he owed in taxes. I'm like, I can't believe that, man. I mean, I do believe it, but I'm like, still the shock value don't, don't really wear off sometimes. Now, for the young people, I want y'all to understand a few things. All right, pay attention, first of all. If you can watch that phone all day and watch your social media feed for 18 hours a day, you can pay attention for a 30-minute message, all right? Don't get too, get too tore up about it. It's only going to affect your life. It's only going to affect your life, you know. It's only going to affect your life, okay? America's a three-party system. Republicans, Democrats, and Independents. And really, some people don't understand this. The Independents are starting. It's the fastest-growing uh, party, really, in the country. It's outgrowing both the others. Now, I'm not so sure that's a bad thing. I think it's probably a good thing. The other two take too much for granted. They take people for granted. They take voting blocks for granted. They take way too much for granted. So uh, I'm not here to promote a party this morning. I'm here to talk about issues. And, and I'll talk about it through two lenses. Number one, uh, my Christian faith that dictates how I vote. And then just my privilege as an American. There are things that our forefathers laid down that we need to understand how important they are so that this thing can continue to go forward. 
There, there are places in the world where you couldn't even do what we're doing today. Not because it's in the... God never mandated that the, the government had to let us do what we're doing today. But I live in a country where they say they're allowed to do that. I'm allowed to do this. You're allowed to do this. It's a good thing, right? And so we'll walk through it. But I will say this. I am amazed, I am amazed at some of the ways that as time goes on, true history has a problem repeating itself. Or, I shouldn't have said that. I should say it this way. True history has a problem being told correctly time and time again. And if you're here today and you're very young at all, if you're not careful, you will, um, you'll be snookered. That's an old southern word there. <laughs> snookered into because you don't know the facts. But I'll give you an area, an area where I, for years I, I could not connect. I didn't understand why things work the way they work until I'd done some research. But for most of my life, I have always noted that in the political arena, it seems like the Republicans in the arena of race, they're known as the racist people, and the Democrats are known as the people of diversity. That's what, that's what is pretty much kind of put out in the societal view today. And so I was, I was looking back at some history stuff, and, uh, and, and I, did, I couldn't connect the dots. I didn't understand why. <clears throat> Especially whenever I started, because in school I didn't pay attention. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. I, didn't, I wish I'd have paid, I should have paid attention. World history is important. U.S. history is important. Pay attention, Michael. You're going to need this. You know what I told them? Same thing they all say. I ain't going to need that. You know what I need now? History. I, I, don't, I don't remember learning some important things like the president, listen to me now, that signed the Emancipation Proclamation that freed the slaves inside the Confederacy. He was a Republican named Abraham Lincoln. I didn't know that. I mean, I knew Abraham Lincoln. I just didn't know he was, I know what party he, party he was for. I also didn't know this until I done a little digging and started scratching around a little bit. I did not know that the greatest civil rights leader of all time, Martin Luther King Jr., registered Republican. I didn't know that. I also did not know until I'd done some history that it was Southern Democrats in Pulaski, Tennessee, that started a group that would inf infamously be known as the Ku Klux Klan. They did that after people of color were given the right to vote and they wanted to suppress the vote of that community and also suppress the vote of northerners moving to the south as republicans so i'm thinking historically i'm like well how how did them things get turned around how did this party over here now become this and that party that i'm not going to give you the answer but you'll want to look up the presidency of one democrat named lyndon johnson and you'll want to see what he signed, but then you need to look behind at what he said about what he was signing and why he signed it, and you'll find out the truth and all you need to know. Interesting. Now, I'm not here for, I'm not here for any party. I'm, not promo I'm just saying, historically, you better not... The, you, if you get your history and your news from TikTok and Facebook, you probably ain't in the know. You're going to actually dig. And, 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 I ain't even so sure Google's all that trustworthy most of the time, and I'm real suspect of Wikipedia. All right, so you probably got to go out. We've got some school teacher. Get a, get a history or civics book from the 70s or 80s, and there's some of that's true. <laughs> According to what group is writing that particular textbook, right? Ain't it hard to get information? Okay, let me tell you just a few things I think probably ought to come in to view whenever you and I are, are, are going to the ballot box and casting our ballots as Christian people. Number one, and this isn't necessarily a Bible thing, though it is a Bible thing, I, I love freedom. Jesus said when we got saved, the truth will make you free and you'll be free indeed. And getting saved set us free. And I sure am glad we live in a country, listen to me now, where we are free. We are free. We, we, get, we have a, you know, we, 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 we grow up in this and we hear about it so we don't appreciate it. But around the world, it's called the American dream for a reason. It's the reason a lot of people in other parts that are disadvantaged would love to come here. We have a golden opportunity to live a life that there's many in the world that will never know what it's like to have the freedoms that we have. And they're precious. There's a lot of blood been shed. So here's what matters to me when it comes time to vote. I, I'm, I'm interested in whoever is more bent toward freedom, less government, not more. Right. I, 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 there's never been a, a society, a nation anywhere in the world where the government got overly strong. I, I can't tell. I really don't need to say this on, on camera. I visited a country on mis doing missions work before where if you were not a government official, you couldn't eat meat. Well, that don't make no sense to us because we can go down here. We can buy meat all day, any day. Right. Matter of fact, while visiting that country to make sure that we weren't we didn't become suspectful. They would take us to certain places, Brother DJ, check us in for a few hours or a day, and then check us out later. And some of those places were places the government would not allow the citizens to go. You had to be a tourist or from out of the country. Now, can you imagine there being somewhere in the United States where your government said you can't go? 
You and I can go about anywhere we want to go, right? Freedom. I, I vote. I love freedom. Freedom's good. I want my, I want, again, I want generations in my family I'll never meet to have this same thing we experience called freedom. Not only my freedom, I'm a patriot. I'm a red, white, and blue guy. I can't help it, man. It's just in my, it's in my veins. I can't help it. I'm a Christian first. I'm American second. Boy, that old red, white, and blue makes me stand up. And I cry sometimes, man. I do. I'm just, I'm tore. I'm a tore up American. Right? I love it. Man. I'm a First Amendment guy. Because in North Korea, they can't pass out tracks on the street. First Amendment, freedom of speech, freedom of expression. And I'm going to say something here now. Just hear me out now. Hear me out, hear me out before you write me off. Because we're bad about not hearing people out before we write them off. For there to be a freedom of speech, Brother Larry, that means that everybody's free to say what they want to say. You're not free from the repercussions of it. You're just free to say what you want to say. And you're free to express as long as you're not hurting anybody else. And I believe in that, right? That means this, okay? I believe that as much as I want the freedom, if I want to stand on the side of the road with a sign that says Jesus saves, I can. But it also means that I have to say that other people have the freedom if they so choose to burn an American flag, they can. As long as it's the one you buy. You go, you go onto a national property where a governmental property where taxpayers' money put that flag in there and take it down, I think you're going to go to prison. Right? You, if you buy them and burn them, that's on you. You say, hey, how does that make you feel, preacher? Matter in a junkyard, dog. It makes me mad, angry. But hang on a second now. It can't just be my freedoms protected. It's got to be everybody's freedoms protected for speech and expression, right? It's like this. Whenever, uh, whenever they were recently protesting and, and, and defacing uh, governmental property, the statues and the monuments and things, we, they were by writing on them like, you know, pro-Palestine, Hamas. I thought somebody should shoot them people off. That's just, but that's why I'm not in government for because I have one in reality. I said, that, 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 ain't, that ain't your property you're destroying over there. You know, the freedom to assemble and protest means you can get out in the streets, but you ain't going to do that. No, huh? That's why, that's why I'm, not in, in, I'm, not, I'm not a government official. I wouldn't make it very long. I wouldn't make it very long at all. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now, ready? Top button issues. You ready? We'll talk about them. And I, and I just researched. What's it, what, 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 what are the main points that, that are being discussed? And I'll give you the Christian view on it and why I feel the way I do. Number one, of course, is the economy. Everybody's talking about the economy. The economy, you know, the economy is a big deal, right? And uh, so what is the Christian view on the economy? I, well, here's what I believe. Personally, I'm, I'm a capitalist. I believe in capitalism, okay? And here's the reason I do. The cream always rises to the top. And if you read your Bible, God rewards hard work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our God is a God that says, if you want to work hard, you should be rewarded for your labor. Here's what he says in Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. I like that God sets it up like that. Work hard and prosper, right? Well, listen to me now. If you don't, you're always going to desire and you're not going to have, okay? He said this in Proverbs twenty two twenty nine: 29. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? In other words, you see a man that's real studious in what he's doing. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. What it is saying is this right here. Diligence equals promotion. And I believe that capitalism promotes that idea. Now listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. I am not for entitlements. And I'm not for a workless welfare system. Why do I feel that way for? Here's why I feel that way. In the Old Testament economy, God had a welfare system, and here's what it was. He said, you, the nation, are not allowed, whenever you harvest your crops, to take the whole field. Leave the gleanings for the poor and impoverished, which means this. They left the corners of the crop out there, and if I was hungry, I would walk out into the cornfield or wherever it was, and I'd pick some of that crop and take it back home, and I would prepare it, and I'd eat, and I could live and survive. They didn't go pick it for him and mail it to him. Oh, no, no, no. I'm actually for programs that help people that are working that have a shortfall. We all pour in the same system. In other words, you got maybe you got a witted mom with two or three kids. Man, we need to help her. You know what I'm saying? She's working. She's doing the best she can. But now, oh, I'm getting in trouble. This system now is killing the family because it's all about, you know, you want to be the baby mama? Don't hold baby daddy accountable. Right? And the more baby mamas you have, the more babies you have, the more we give you. That's backwards. I know young people, listen to me now, that wouldn't get married because the check would go away. I'm like, so our government, through that system, is encouraging them to continue in sin. I can't get up with that. Amen. I can't get up with that. 
So I'm not, I'm not for the entitlements at all. I'm, I'm for, listen to me now. Oh, by the way, let's get this out and open real quick. Let's, this generation misunderstand it. Social security is not an entitlement. They take that money from you today, you start working by force. They don't ask you, can't, do you want to participate? Oh, no, they're going to take it. Now, the bunch of dummies are supposed to invest it. And whenever you get ready to retire, it's supposed to be there waiting for you to come as a check the day you die, right? And now they're saying, well, he don't know if it's going to be there or not. Y'all might want to start, whoa, 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 hoss. Give me back everything I put in. You at least owe me that. What you should have done 30 years ago says, we don't know if this program's going to work. You keep your money. Let us send you an investment specialist to get you started. Now, that would have worked out a lot better. Then it would have been on me. But that ain't what you said. And you kept on taking and taking and taking. And ain't it funny how every time some other country gets in trouble, 800 million of them and 700 billion of them. We just give it. We, give, we got this cash. We throw it away like a birthday party. Give it away, give it away, give it away. And then they look at us and say, we just don't know, y'all. We just don't know. Oh, you better know. You better know and somebody if I better figure it out. Amen. Now, I'm going to get in trouble again and again and again and again. Amen. January 6th was not the time for an uprising, but if that goes down, that would be. Oh, I, that was good. Jan 6 wasn't the time to storm the Capitol, but when they look at you and I and say, all that money we took, we, you ain't getting none of it. Now we got to talk, Jack. Now we got to talk. Because it's a funny thing to me how all y'all get hired on making 175 to 225 a year and all of you retire multi, 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 multi millionaires. Yes, off that money, that ain't possible unless somebody's sticking some in your kicks and whenever ain't nobody looking to get you to vote a certain way. Don't get me started. I just come to preach. I didn't come to mess around with politics today now. Okay? I didn't come to mess around. <laughs> Amen. So I don't believe in entitlements. I tell you what I believe in. I believe in philanthropy. Philanthropy is when people who have give who, what they want to who they want to. Entitlement is when the government takes from you in your tax system to give to who they want to. And most in programs, you and I both know, ain't none of us who would say, I'm for that. You can, give, you can take my money I work for and give to that cause or these people. No, 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 no. I believe in philanthropy. I believe the Bible teaches philanthropy. I don't believe it. I believe the rest of it. I believe the rest of it's about almost like a heist. I'll give you another one. I'll never see this in my lifetime probably, but I believe in a flat tax. Yes, sir, Let me tell you what don't make no sense at all. Okay? Rich people ought not pay more taxes because they're rich. And I'm not. I mean, I'm just barely crawling in the middle class, and I ain't sure about that anymore. <laughs> but it's like ties. Everybody pays the same rate. That's what it should be with taxes. Just tax us one time. Oh, by the way. That's one thing, too, that just gets on my nerves, okay? You ever notice that we get taxed before they give it to us, and then they tax us at the counter when we buy something. Yeah. Then you pay for something, and they tax you again. On, like, you got that car. You know that car you got that's worth $500? And you get the tax assessment, and it's an it's a $80,000 Lincoln. <laughs> and you're like, I'll sell it to you for 80. <laughs> right? Am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? It ain't 80 unless you want to tax me on it, right? You, if you come in here to buy it, you bring $500. That's what it's worth. So I give you the buck 75 for it. But don't charge me $500 for a junker. Amen. You know what taxing the rich at a higher rate really is? It's punishing people for working hard. It's punishing people for making sacrifice. Listen, I graduated, I've told you this before, at the bottom of my class without honors. Okay? That was a joke. I didn't get that. In other words, I did not apply myself in school very well. Okay? I have sense. You ain't got to worry. I'll, be, I'll take care of you now. Okay? I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dummy up here. I've, I've gotten over that. I got, when God called me to preach, I went and got me some education. <laughs> but listen to me. There was people I graduated from school with that got out and, and signed up for four more years, some of them six more years, some of them eight more years of school. I wasn't willing to do that. But Brother DJ, the ones who did become doctors and lawyers, and they got really good jobs making really good money, and they deserved that. They worked for what I didn't work for. And why should they work and make that and then take from them and give to me? I wasn't willing to do what they were willing to do. There are different people starting businesses. They take the risk. They step out on a limb. Some of them work two and three jobs, right? Why? They want to do something maybe for their family or their children that was not able to be done for them or wasn't done for them. And so they make the sacrifice. Why do you keep sucking off of them people? I ain't trying to be mean or cold-hearted. Y'all know I'm, I'm not that bad of a guy. Why are you going to take from them to give from that guy that's 35 years old sitting over our... At the stoplight with a sign. Yes. I still ain't figured out. I'm a, I'm a, if I want a preacher. <laughs> I go over and stand beside him with a sign that says, why y'all giving y'all's money to this guy? 
Because it's always the people coming into town going to work. I'm like, why does that not register? You're getting ready to go pull 8, 10, 12 hours, and you're giving him, and he's happier than you are. What are you giving him money for? He said, he got a big gulp and a backpack and a cell phone. When ain't nobody around, he's scrolling on Facebook. I'm like, that dude be better off than all y'all. Yeah, y'all can't even afford to have the pizza guy deliver a pizza. And that guy right there had three pizzas this week. What's wrong with his picture? You know? And, and listen, and this is, man, I'll tell you, I started some trouble today. I didn't even mean to get into this. I ain't going to get past my economy's part, okay? Goodness. I better not go there. I better not go there. I thought about that before I did. <laughs> man. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so the economy. That's how I vote on the economy. I think the economy ought to work for hardworking people. It ought to work for hardworking people. Matter of fact, that's one of the things I think the government needs to be responsible for. Keep the economy rolling so we can just work. You know what I'm saying? There's something so healthy about work. It's not a cuss word. Not like it. Okay, the second issue. Let's, let's move on. Okay. Is uh, the right to life. They call it the abortion issue. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 139, verse 12, the psalmist said it like this. He says, talking to the Lord, for thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. In other words, he was known in the womb by his Creator. Um, I'm pro-life. I'm pro-life. To the second, third, and fourth power. Listen, listen closely to me now. And here, and, and I'm just going to speak the truth in love, if I could here, okay? You and, I, you and I well know that that issue is more about reckless behavior and the ability to be reckless in that area without the same repercussions. Before that became an option, listen to me closely now. Pe- people, I hear these stories, or I did in days gone by from grandparents and great-grandparents, whatever the case may be, where you knew if you got in an expecting way that he's taking responsibility and y'all are starting, y'all getting ready to go down to just to the peace or we're going to drag the preacher out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning, whatever we got to do. Somebody fit to get married, start life together. Congratulations, right? So there were some, reper- there were some things that make you think twice about it. And I know that when they talk about it, they always talk about, you know, there's, there's that issue and then there's the rape and And they major on the rape and the incest like it's the overwhelming, it's not the overwhelming problem. It's just a small, minute number. And, and it's so minute. Listen, now, you can't have a rape and it be a one-party system. It's got to be two. So we, that, that becomes a court issue, right? I mean, we, got the, we can get the legal problem. But so, that is so impacted in such a minute way. But the courts can handle that. There's so few of those actually that exist. Well, what about all this other stuff here? Where all the majority of it's taking place, it's just this. It's irresponsibility most of the time. And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not preaching that in, in, in a way to where uh, holier than thou, but I'm just saying I'm for the right to life, and I'm always going to be right to life. Yes, amen. Issue number three, crime in public safety. Can you, can you even turn your TV on anymore where you don't see a tragedy? I mean, from gangs in, in Colorado, you know, knocking down doors at apartment complexes to women out jogging and getting raped and killed. It's crazy. I'm for law and order. I'm a, I'm a back the blue kind of guy. Now, when I say that, here's what I mean. Call the bad apples. I'm glad for cameras and everything else. I think everyone, every, listen, some people cannot handle authority and power. Okay, when they get it, they become jerks. And I think police departments have got to be held accountable to call those rascals, okay? And, uh, but there's still a lot of, I don't know about you, but I'm glad in the middle of the night if I need to pick up the phone and call somebody, somebody's coming. Amen. Somebody's coming, right? And uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a law and order kind of guy. I'm, I'm a 2A guy. Second Amendment, man, praise God. Amen. Amen. All day long and twice on Sunday. Oh, by the way, and don't y'all be deceived when you hear politicians talk about it when it comes to uh, the, the reason that they supposedly won't, don't want us to have uh, guns with uh, big clips is because you don't need them for hunting. Go back and read that Constitution. Ain't nothing in there about hunting. That Second Amendment was not given for hunting purposes. It was, actually, if you get technical about it, it was to protect us from our own government of rich. Why did they put that in there? Because whenever they come from a from a country that was known to overreach by the government. They said, y'all going to need a Second Amendment just to keep the government honest. Yes. Okay, keep, keep, them, keep them in their lane, so to speak, all right? And uh, not only that, but I do appreciate the fact it does keep dictators honest too. Yes, sir. How come is it every time a nation that's dictatorial in government leadership invades one uh, weaker than them, we always got to send them people guns? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody ever thought, stop to think, well, if y'all already had some, like, if Ukraine already had a Second Amendment, then Putin would have stayed on his side of the fence. He wouldn't have come. He wouldn't have come. I'd like to be president for a minute. I know, look at all my allies. All our allies say, y'all, look, we want to be y'all's friends, but I want to promise every one of you something. If you don't get a Second Amendment right now and arm your people, when the bad dogs come in, don't call us. You causing this. Hey, look, I, 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 do, I, I have a problem, and it hadn't had to happen yet. I would have a real problem 
with American boys and girls going there shedding their blood to protect people. And I hate to be this too dumb to protect ourselves. We didn't say you got to carry it down the road every day, but put it in the closet with about a thousand rounds of ammo and he's going to stay on his side of the fence. Hey, man, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you. It's funny if you think about it. Listen to this. China boasts the world's biggest foot soldier army, two million men. America is about 1.3. China's at two. You know, Russia's got over a million, whatever. Here's, let me tell you the good news, okay? If Russia and China were to combine their armies and wanted to come and invade America, do you know what the ratio is because of how many citizens we have that have firearms? 83 to two. For every two of their soldiers, we have 83 Americans that are locked and loaded. Go home and sleep tonight with that one right there. Go clean it, buy a new box for shells for Christmas, and just make sure, just in case it hits the fan, you're ready. Amen. Americans have been resting too easy for too long. Some people hear you talk like it and they're like, oh, that would never happen here. I wouldn't hold my breath. It's not that it ain't possible. I tell you what I believe is preventing it right now. Our forefathers. Right? I think America's trying to draw them people into conflict. Because we they they, they uh, yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble again. Have I been in trouble yet? America keeps kind of like the, the people we put out before the world to see what kind of men we have are like these sissy men with the painted fingernails and the hair out, you know, looking like girls. I'm like, y'all are baiting people into a fight because if they think when they get here, that's what's waiting for them. They got another thing coming. It's a bunch of hard-blooded, red-blooded working men. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't kill you is look at you. Somebody needs to get that message across the water before somebody makes a mistake. Yeah. Amen. Okay, let's move on because y'all are starting too much trouble, okay? I got to get done. It's 1044 already. Then you move to the issue of immigration. Okay, immigration. We, it needs to be reformed, don't it? Yes, if we were to talk to Nehemiah today, you know what Nehemiah would say? Build a wall. Yes, it's just smart. You can put gates all around it. There's got to be points of entry, but you build a wall, and then you vet people. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, oh, our immigration system, it's been broke for decades. Why ain't y'all fix it? We pay y'all to fix it. Y'all make a lot of money. We could hire Chick-fil-A. They'd fix it in a couple weeks. <laughs> they know how to process people, right? You bring them up to the window, you ask what you want, right? You bring them up here, you take their money. You give them their food and say, thank you very much. Have a good day. It ain't that hard, y'all. You bring them up to the gate. You say, okay, well, let me tell, who are you? Where'd you come from? Let us check what's going on where you was. Right? Here's your number. If you get in any trouble, you're going home and you ain't ever coming back. I just fixed the whole problem. Right? Here's probably the number one issue that you and I need to consider. In my opinion, this is just an opinion. Election integrity. Because here's what we know. If we don't have free and fair elections, we don't even have a, we don't have a country. Right. Elections have got to be free, and they've got to be fair, okay? There should be strong laws, in, but they've got to be enforced. It don't matter what so laws are on the book. We don't enforce the laws we got. That, that's bothersome, is it not? I, think, I feel so strongly about it. I think this would cut the majority of it out. And there is a monkey business. It's been going on for 40 years, okay? 50 years, maybe. If you get caught in voter fraud, you should have a heavy fine, prison time, and permanently lose your right to vote. Yes. That, would make people say, that would make people think twice before they show up with a dead man's driver's license or to vote for the 18th time, right? Amen. And while we're doing that, though, let's just be honest about it. We need to look at, like, our state. You ever seen the districting maps in North Carolina, how the, the districts are drawn up? You ever heard the term gerrymandering? It goes on here. Yeah, there's, it's weird. We got a district that, like, runs a, an interstate corridor. Like, it looked like a straw, somebody just fell over. All the rest of them are kind of cut out right. I'm like, well, I wonder why that one looks like that. That don't quite make no sense unless that was done intentionally. I don't know who done it, but we need to fix that. That's, that's, that, that just looks too suspect to me. Now, you know, there is a way for to have free and fair elections. They're called voter ID. You know? You know, IDs, you got to have them to drive and fly and buy cigarettes. Y'all don't need them for that, probably. Alcohol, I hope y'all don't need them for that either. Right? So, so what makes it so oppressive, unless you need to cheat, what makes it so oppressive for everybody to have an ID? You know? You, you, we can give them away free. It don't cost no money. If it does, I'll pay the bill. But everybody will have to show one, and whenever you come in and show yours, oh, you, done, you voted. They want nobody else to vote with this name. And if your name don't match your face, you ain't voting either. Ain't that easy? That's pretty easy. Because if we don't have some integrity in that area, there won't be anything for them to vote for. The next one's this, voting issue, foreign policy, national security. 
I do believe peace through strength. I believe you stand with your allies and you, de you deter the dictators. You know? Yeah, I got news for y'all. Our society, this weakness that's, that's going on in American culture is not fixing any of the problems, you know? I went too long ago, a couple years back, and they have these anti-bullying laws. That ain't how you deal with bullies. Our generation and the ones before us know how to deal with bullies. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But I won't go into it because this is church setting, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Most of them bullies are just bullying because ain't nobody ever bullied them back. You bully a bully. That's the way you deal with a bully. You bully a bully. All right? You, can tell all, you don't have to go tell all the teachers and everything else and run from them. No, no, no. That just empowers the bully. Okay? You bully the bully. Uh, so I, li I like strength. Uh, build the military. Yeah. Let's put us up an iron dome like Israel's got. Yeah. Do you do know that if Israel didn't have an iron dome, it wouldn't be here today? Right. right? Shooting them missiles out of the skies that come through. Good stuff. Good stuff. Health care. That's a big one, right? I, I, I can, it, that's just another system broken by greed. Let me ask you a question. How come whenever we go to make a doctor's visit today or get a surgery, do they ask us this question? Are you insured? Because yeah. it changes the price. If you're uninsured and you can pay cash, oh, well, you pay this. But if you've got insurance, we're going to sock it to them good. Well, that's why it's broke. Okay, because when it's costing four times to get the surgery what it should cost, if you can survive and make money here, then we should all be paying this price. Then our insurance premiums are out the, out the sky, out, right at the roof. Right? Y'all need to, y'all look at me like, that guy could be president. <laughs> Stop it. I'm a preacher, okay? That's what I do. Y'all just... No, Brother Hiller, don't you start chanting back there now, Mike, for praise. <laughs> that is enough. That is enough. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I got to have a little good time, okay? You ready? I got two more. We're done. It's 10 till almost, all right? Um, education. That's important, by the way. Our children need to be educated, not indoctrinated. There was a day and time whenever you went to school, you were learning English and history and math and science and some electives, okay? And you left the social issues to the home. We need to get back there. Okay, we need to get back there. Not indoctrination, education. And it's important, by the way. And the Christian school is not the answer because too many of them I've seen fail. And the homeschool is not the answer. We just need to look at our kids, man. You know, well, there was a, when I was young, I remember them talking about our national or our worldwide rankings about where we were ranking in math and science. We were on up the list. We're way down here now. And, and listen to this. The, the kids are not the ones failing, y'all. We have failed the kids. We have failed the kids in that we are expecting less than we've ever expected. And we've allowed this. And that really comes down, not just your national vote, that comes down to your local vote. That's why even the, even the off-year elections are important. Your school board members and people like that, because they're the ones that kind of let things go, of what can and cannot be taught or whatever in the school. And then lastly, and I'll give you this and I'm done, climate change, okay? Let me give you a promise. It's going to change, okay? Let me give you a verse on that. You ready? All right, for 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, the Bible says this world or this earth is reserved in the fire. It's going to change in the near future, and the way it's going to change is going to burn up. The question is, are you ready for it? Now, that does not mean we, shouldn't, we should be foolish. It doesn't mean we shouldn't take care of this, that, and the other. Uh, but, but whenever the stuff's being proposed is going to, number one, bankrupt us, and number two is asinine, okay? If we got so much liquid gold under our feet, why don't we just sell all that and get rid of the debt? Because as long, if there wasn't no debt, then they couldn't keep coming back to us and saying, y'all, we need a little more. All right, we need a little more. Yeah, we, we're, going to have to we're going to need a little more, need a little more, need a little more. They're going to do it until one day they're just in charge of everything. And we become one of those countries like the others, unfortunately. No freedom. No nothing. So here's what I'm saying. October the 11th is the last day to register. If you've never registered, please go register. And then October the 17th starts early voting. And it goes all the way to Election Day, which is November the 5th. For the love of humanity, or at least the American ones, would you please register and vote if you never have? Now, notice that not one time in this, I didn't tell you who to vote for. But I just said, here's some Christian values, even some patriotic ones that I consider. You don't have to consider them, okay? I do. But please, for you young people that are turning 18, register and vote. I'm going to tell you when it gets real. I'm done right here, okay? It gets real whenever they're getting ready to ship our troops off. We're getting ready to go fight a real stupid war that we don't have no business being in. And you have to think back and go, I didn't vote. And because I didn't, maybe this candidate got in. And they're sending my 18, 19, 20-year-old off to fight something that's stupid. Then you got to lay your head on the pillow every night with that. Go. Vote. Father.